Introducing RS30 Ultra. The first sim racing wheel and pedals designed by a professional championship racer. Officially licensed by Microsoft, RS30 brings next level realism to your racing sims. Sense the road, know your vehicle, and get faster lap times as you tear through the track. Dual helical gear motors give you more torque than traditional gear drive motors with the same smoothness and quietness of a belt drive motor. Experience a stunning six newton meters of torque, the most torque per dollar than any other wheel, and fast, accurate feedback with zero dead zones. Feel every nuance and know exactly when you're understeering, oversteering, or losing traction. Spring-loaded pedals give you responsive throttle modulation and brake progression for absolute control and precision, just like the real thing. Two additional paddles can be used as clutch and e-brake, or as pedal-free throttle and brakes. A rotation switch lets you easily toggle between simulation racing and arcade-style racing. Even the diameter of the wheel is calibrated to exact race car specifications. And an easy share button lets you save and share your best laps with a simple push. From the metal build to the suede wheel and steel pedals, every detail is dialed to give the entire system a high-end feel. Get better, go faster, win more, and enjoy every second of it. With RS30 Ultra, you'll race like a pro and feel like one too. RS30 Ultra by GTR Simulator. Go fast. Looking for a new PC or an upgrade to your current one? Look no further than Ford Entertainment Group, your home for the best quality and value in new, pre-built, and custom PCs at the lowest price guaranteed. We have affordable PC solutions for any budget, with custom builds starting at $595. Even the pros turn to Ford Entertainment Group to get them up and running. With valued customers from all over the world, it's easy to see why Ford Entertainment Group is the most trusted brand in custom PCs. I wanted to save my awesome subscribers the most money when they started their sim racing journey. Well, I searched high and low for the best deals. And I'm so proud that Jeffrey and I have partnered up so I can spread the good news about where to get the lowest price on a high quality computer. Feel confident when buying from us with the FEG satisfaction guarantee. Get yourself on track today by visiting us online at FEGPC.net. Kicker Gamer 2, what you see and what you hear is what you feel. Butt Kicker, the future is feeling. Today's racing action is presented in part by our good friends and sponsors over at Pedal the Metal Racing League Season 5. Thank you again to all the friends and family and folks that have come forth to help us out this season. We can't thank you guys enough, and thank you all so much for tuning in. We certainly hope you enjoy the show as we now set sail for tonight's action broadcasted here on PTN Racing TV. And yes, indeed, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back here to PTN Racing TV live here today, Sparta, Kentucky. It is time for Kentucky Speedway to take aim and host. As we are about to witness 10 of the best go out of here with Battle of the Metal Racing League, 
right here on PT Race TV. I got her own. I am Christian the Crusader Striver, and I welcome you back here today for the uh, for the racing action presented in part by GTR Racing Simulator. It is 10 of the finest and toughest drivers going at it once more here on the track, and this time around Kentucky will have to be their playing their playing field and the battleground to work their way off. But tonight, let's take a look at our starting lineup on the pole. Number 20 at Jeffrey Oaks will get another fast qualifying time. To his outside will be Matthew Hoffrey in the 84. Row 2 sees Brandon Pike in the 22. His outside the 5. Chantel, the throttle pottle. Row number 3, Robert Dudley-Ville -Dud Dudley in the 49. is outside Corey Reed in the 27. Row 4 sees Jeffrey Dodd Tufts in that 72. And then the rattlesnake Robert Kahn in the 21. Final starter Dennis Warrens in the 90. And Jason Henry in the number 3. Khan will have to start from the outhouse here. He's still being told he's been a bad boy for most of the season, so he's going to have to work his way up to the front as usual. So it's going to be interesting to see if he can get that dialed up down here. Dudleyville coming on board saying, wow, wow, good to hear from you, buddy. So as they reel them off up a corner number four, down to the front straightaway we go. The action is going to kick up, and it's time to hit them on down here tonight. Let's get down to the race, and here we go. Kentucky Speedway, definitely going to be a bit of an interesting kind of track here. This is the newer version we're running on today, not the old version. So this is the track layout that has the uh, embankments a little bit changed up. The lower top turns one and two are actually increased, where three and four was left the same. So it makes it for a little bit more of a challenge, if you will. But at the same time, it also kind of boils down to kind of your style of racing, how you want to race it out here. First, if you ask me, this is probably the more interesting style of the, of the, stri of the racing strips. We've seen some incredible battles here, some great races here, of course. So, obviously, this track can definitely wield us results. But how that fares with the Cup Series, yeah, we'll see about that. And honestly, we have seen, we know it can put on a great race. We saw the absolute barn burner that was the final race back in 2019. That was an incredible, excuse me, 2018, excuse me. That was an incredible race they had there. But all the other races were either kind of hard to watch or because of the traffic or it was just really wasn't much to watch. So hopefully that does not be the case here and we can see some incredible battles going on down here today. So far out of the gate, it's been pretty clean, pretty solid here for everyone. But again, it's early, so we'll see what happens as we go on board there with Jason Henry just for a minute. Right now, the way we're standing, pretty much, unless Robert Dudley doesn't show up for these, this next race here, he really has pretty much locked this title up. This one's all but his. He has pretty much gained so much points, so much traction. There's no way he can be knocked out of it. There's no way anyone can take him down out of there. So, Marla Scaffity Pike coming on board saying, Go Pike, rooting on her boy, Brandon. That number 22, the Pennzoil machine. Even though he doesn't have his number on there, don't worry. We do know that's the 22, folks. Trying to charge up and trying to make some maneuvers off, trying to run as best he can. Right now, having to deal with Robert Dudley on the inside of the left side corner panel. Bobby Hoffer kind of weighing back here, looking for a move here in that tack X machine. Oh, yeah, the Camry trying to make a move or two here. The three moves of doom, as I like to call them here. Look to the inside, then back off, look to the outside, then back off, and then go for it all on the next run. Get a good idea of what you're up to. And you saw right there, Dudley made Pike think about it just a little too much. Gave him a clear-cut opening. Now takes full aim. He takes full shot up as you see him moving him off side by side. Paddle for position here as they lean him down in through corners number three and four. Close contact there. Dudley had to back off slightly there. And let Pike go. Here comes the 84 on the inside. Three wide salute down the front straightaway. Clear cut, though. Dudley has to try to sway. He's trying to avoid. Offer trying to keep him in line, keep him in check. Dudley has to back off big time here. A lot of room lost there for the 39. 
And Jeffrey Oaks, by the way, we have really lost him on this picture. He's really a second and a tenth, two tenths off from pretty much second place. He's gone a pretty good distance away from Pike and the rest of the field. Chantel Toronto here tonight, still trying to get through her injury. She's still dealing with on the. She said her nagging injuries keep bugging her, but at least she's able to hold on. She is streaming right now on Paul's Racing. If you guys want to have a listen in, see how she's doing. So far, though, hanging on by about six spots. Currently only lost two spots down as the rattlesnake Robert Kahn makes his way from the outhouse back up to the White House. Every driver fights for their survival. Every driver gives it their heart and soul no matter where they go. And that's the beauty of Pedal Motor Racing League. It's such a community and such a just an all-out fight to the end, fight for all you got kind of racing style that it just really makes for some incredible battles, incredible moments. And so far, Kentucky has definitely been giving us that. Lap 35 will be our stage break here today, so that will be when the drivers kind of cool off for just a sec, kind of relax, get themselves squared away, and then set up for the next go-around. Reed parking up on the outside, takes over their third place here as the Reconstruction 27 moves the chains. Now looking to try and knock down Pike here. Brandon Pike's been one of those guys. You just kind of got to keep your eye on, man. You, you can either really just pound this thing into the ground and make a run like no one else can, or he ends up finding himself in just no man's land too often than not, just gets himself in such a struggle spot. Oaks right now currently, he's well, honestly, I'm not sure if he's just playing, f see if he can catch me or just literally holding on to that throttle. All I know is he is just making it wail and making a run here. No troubles there for the number 20. As you see now, Dudley trying to gain back in ground position. Clearance off to the bottom side. Deals Hoffer. Uh, Dudley trying to move the chains on the outside. Very easy to do through his turn one and two, but three and four, well, let's just say that's a bit of a different story. But if you can get a charge there on that back straightaway leading into 3 and 4, then you're pretty much set and good to go there. And Dudley is doing just that and then some nice cornering off on the exit there and makes his move, makes his charge. Now brings it right back up in the fourth spot here. But Corey Reed is now moving the chains up to the 22. Brandon Pike looking for an opening. Pike's not going to give it to him that easily, though. He knows he's going to have to fight for it just a little bit. Gaps closing down, runs getting faster and harder on the track here. And you can see that Reed drives that thing is so wide. Again, a lot of that has to do with just kind of the way he wants to corner it off, the way he's having to hit it up. And where the heck did the rattlesnake come from? Oh, my. Watch out for that 21. The rattlesnake is now on patrol, and he is biting the entire field in like they're nothing. He'll stack this thing up, and he'll bite quickly. He has no trouble doing that. He has got to be one of the favorites going into the rest of these two races. Next week is the finale at Michigan. And the last time we were in Michigan, we had a barn burner battle to the end. Great race. Will we get that pleasure again with the cup cars compared to what Xfinity used to do? Well, we'll see. But right now, currently, every driver for themselves, nobody giving an inch here, especially not up the chains and up to the front. See Dennis Warren's there kind of laying back low. Trying to avoid all the trouble, trying to avoid all the issues right now. Field still kind of moving their way around. Dudleyville making a good momentum boost, a little bit of a kickoff or two, trying to hang in there with Brandon Pike. He had to get sent back a little earlier on now, really just kind of just let himself kind of dig this thing in. Again, they are running that 550 horsepower package. And let me tell you something, that 550 horsepower, I learned this here from Kale Gale, it becomes such a hard issue of figuring out the long term versus the short term, how you set the car up, the tires, and the way those wings are in the back. Those spoilers really kind of make a big difference when it comes to how you get that drag and that toe spin there. Read all about it, listen to also what we had to, what he had to talk about last Tuesday on the Champ Barracom Cup Series there. Kale, if you are watching, man, first off, congratulations on the on your son here, my man, and hopefully you and your wife, your fiance, excuse me, are doing all right. Great guy, loved working with him that night and really had a good time really learning the true dynamics of why that 550 horsepower package as well as what makes those what's these cars make them so difficult to run and so hard to drive because even I admit up front, I'm not an expert with these things. I actually, frankly, I'm not a very big fan of them. I'd personally rather drive trucks for the Xfinity if I can, because honestly, those 
you can figure those out and actually run them pretty decently. A cup car. Honestly, I thought they were just a heavy piece of machinery that felt like a tow truck after about two laps or so. If I dare try to drive them hard, a lot of times I'd have to drive them hard because most of the time guys be able to figure out how to get past me so quickly and I couldn't get them. So we're getting kind of that 550 horsepower pack as we talked earlier about this here in that drafting drag race here between everybody, everyone cornering in close. Jason Henry, Dennis Warren, they're all now moving in. Brandon Pike, he has so much momentum earlier on. You can see just what about 15 laps will do to you if you try to drive too hard. But again, he had to to try to catch Jeffrey Oaks, but it was not enough time to evade and get out of the trouble zone here. Henry, Pottle, Reed, Warren's all in there. Todd Tuss right now just kind of holding the back of the pack up. Let's get on board here. That D-Dub number 90 here of Dennis Warren. It's good to see him back out on the track here. Talk about a guy that knows how to really muscle his way around the place and make some good racing. He was, he was pretty much kind of locked and loaded when he came out here with this 90 D-Dub button box machine, but I have really not seen him truly just show what kind of a driver he really is except for his close car and finishes, his close second place battles he's had in the last three or four weeks. Really popped a number on his name and really made himself really worthy of that challenge and that expertise. Jason Henry right now, the number three, also giving himself a pretty good look around here. Finding out that GTR Racing Simulator number five is Chantel the Throttle Bottle. Trying to hang on here. She had a good start there on the qualifying end, but unfortunately she kind of fell victim to the old Kentucky issue, which is basically you get a good run to start, and then you have to try to figure out how to build it up later. And these drivers are trying to save up to lap 35 which is going to be their stage break. That's going to be their big kick at office to help them out. Well, I think it's a better time than anything to go on board here with Jeffrey Oaks, and let's see what old Oaks he's doing to make them so fast here. Now, I think there's two big things here that makes Oaksy so quick here. You saw one a minute ago where that line is. Actually, you see it right there, too, coming in three and four. You can see that line, that almost kind of that reviation point. That's kind of like an area that allows you to kind of figure out where you want to hit up and which corner you want to spot into. It's actually kind of a unique circumstance where as long as you drive it in just right, you don't have to lift too much comparatively what you have to do for one and two and three and four. Three and four, you have to lift a little bit more than one and two, but you can hear that throttle rhythm. He's actually getting a lot of horsepower kind of driving in. Whereas three and four is complete opposite. It has to really back off, let the car kind of take shape, take aim, and then let it rear back and fire off again. Top three so far, still battling out here. Anybody's guess who's gonna walk away with this one, get this one dialed up here. If you are new to the channel here as well on P3's TV, first off, thank you so much for tuning on in. Second off, if you do like what you see and like the content, what we do, we want to help support the channel, be sure to like, hit that like and follow sub button here on Facebook. Hit the subscribe button over on YouTube. Yes, all the races go to YouTube, and we will have this race in its entirety there. It's speaking of entirety. I don't know. These cars are going to be able to stay in one piece when this is over with. Three wide slow down that front shredder, on that front straightaway. Dennis Warren's now right on the bottom end. Pike, the meat of the sandwich. Great driving, though. Able to corner off. That's two times tonight. We've seen the three wide slew pop in, and everyone comes out clean. Impressive. That's great driving. That's good expertise and technical driving by everyone to make it through the corners and, good, and battling it through. You know, up front right now, the guys may not be as close as they want to be, but honestly, they know with that stage break, that'll change quickly. But here in the back, I'm telling you right now, guys, these guys are putting on, and these gals, as I should say as well, we got Chantel out there, they're putting on a show and putting on a great fight here, not only for themselves, but for their crew and their teams, because they know next season they're going to be really working towards getting a good team, get, getting themselves some good crew chiefs, good, good people to work with their cars and their tires, and they're really going to have to dial these fixed setups in even more because next season is going to get even more wild. Literally from day one, when we came on here to the iRacing service, I did not once think that season one, you know, would go as crazy as it did with the street stocks and even the legend series pulling on some great shows. 
And frankly, I will not lie, I still miss those street stock races, man. I wish I stayed in them, and I wish I raced them out. But at that time, that was a dark place for me and my end, so I decided to just go the broadcasting end, which I don't regret, but I do miss racing them at least. But hey, you know, at the end of the day, we're still out here doing our own thing, doing our own style, and that's what it's all about. What it missed us for the world, and these drivers know all that too well. So far, so good, though. I mean, what, what we going back? Well, I got completely off topic. I'm spewing too much about what I what I love and all that. It's like, come on, man, you gotta get back to the topic. Topic on hand. We got the Legend Series too. We were running in season one, and then we end up jumping over from there over to then what would be known as the Arca Series and the Late Mile Series. That had some pretty impressive racing, some good battles. Then switch it over to trucks, and then who stayed with the super lay models, and that's when things just started to really kick off. Things got even more fun and more better out of the gate, you know. And I'm I'm not trying to be completely too all over the place here, or too you know too in trouble here, but just seeing how far this league has grown and how far this series and this broadcast service and everything has gone, it really just takes aim to what we have done and what we've accomplished. And again, you've been the fans that have been there with us. Since day one, really, it does mean a lot to us, and we thank you so much for it. So, whatever happens in season six, all I can say is be ready, because I think we might have an even more wild season ahead of us. Wild racing ahead, still, we got quite a bit going on. A few more laps left to go here before we hit up to lap 35, and that's when things get a little bit more crazy out here. Robert Conner going into pit road immediately. Matthew Hoffer going to follow in pursuit. So did Jeffrey Oaks. Oaks, he already went into pit road a little earlier on. He's actually now just pitting out. Robert Dudley, the only one that stayed on out. So it looks like fuel mileage-wise, looks like they're going to be a capped at about 30, which means they'll have to pit at least one more time, maybe two more. It's going to be interesting to see what happens. Kathleen Martin coming on board here saying, who's all racing right now? Well, we got Robert Dudley, Matthew Hoffert, Robert Kahn, Jason Henry, Chantel Pottle, Dennis Warns. Jeffrey Todd Tufts, Jeffrey Oaks, Corey Reed, and Brandon Pike, Miss Kathleen. Speaking of Todd Tufts, he's one of the only other drivers that are staying out here like Dudley here. My next, yeah, I, I think we kind of blew off Todd Tufts here a little bit. We, if we kind of forgot about him, he's, you know, if he's going to try to stand on our lap or two, he's actually going to take over the race lead. But hearing that throttle rhythm come down the way he's hitting the corners up, that's definitely not going to be the case here. He's going for pit road. be honest, might be a smart strategy to get a fresh set of tires on there and get some fuel in there. Inject them up and get ready to get them back on out. So only about five laps remain here now before we head to the stage break. Caution will come out at lap 35 for the competition caution. And Jeffrey Oaks still hanging on to the race lead, but Matthew Hoffer not too far behind trying to gain up there to him. The only driver that kind of came out of pit road on our worst end or note, I would say, probably be the five. Chantel Pottle ends up almost dead last year, just behind Dennis Warren. She'll get past Todd Tuss here, not being dead last. But that was, seems like she might have had a longer pit strategy mindset than the other boys. Maybe trying to get a little bit more fuel, a little bit more tires on her end, so I wish she could stay out compared to the other guys. She's been known to get a little clever with her strategy, so I don't know. Maybe her tactic is to try to go long distance, long run. Say what you will about that, but at the end of the day, a win's a win if you can get it, so. And I'll tell you right now, trying to win in this series with any of these drivers is easier said than done. I know that all too well from Super Lay Mile Racing. And Robert the Rattlesnake Khan knows that too much as well. Hoffer, he gets right up ahead of him. Hoffer giving the door wide open and loses position. Track gain going to the Rattlesnake. I think Hoffer's strategy was to just take two tires and go, but I don't think that was what he was hoping would happen here. Brandon Pike moving the chains up now up ahead of Corey Reed. Got a little bit of help there from Jeffrey Todd Tuss. And now it is Pike who moves back up into the top five. Reed losing a, starting to fade off slightly here as Jeffrey Oaks will put it across the finish line with one more lap to go. Stage break coming up here. Je Jeffrey Oaks, the number 20 Jackdaw Motorsports Machine, 
is pretty much locked and loaded, but is it going to be a long distance run for him, especially with Khan ever so present, ever so quick to come by. He'll definitely put some momentum in his hand, put some tr and put a trick or two up his sleeve. But for Jeffrey Oaks in this stage, he'll have some work to do. Caution flag will fly out. Competition caution coming up. Credit for credit to Khan though. Made a great jump to catch up there to Oaksy. Oaksy was just a little bit too fast though for his own liking. So your stage winner will be the number 20. So Oaksy is going to be the stage winner, which will mean everyone else will have to pile them back up and figure out what they're going to do about the pit strategies. Which one can figure it out first and win this race out? They're going to have a long road ahead of them when we return here to P2 Race TV. Tonight's race, ladies and gentlemen, Season 5 Cup Series is presented in part by GTR Racing Simulator. Welcome to the future, GTR Racing Simulator. It's not that we broke the mold. We just never used one. By D-Dub Button Boxes. Quality Button Boxes made your way. D-Dub Button Boxes always has you covered. By the Butt Kicker Company. Best in performance for real tracks of the virtual world. The Butt Kicker. Feel what you've been missing. By Gearhead Coffee. Whether you're wrenching on your vehicle at the home garage or servicing customers at your automotive repair fac facility or dealership, Gearhead Coffee provides a unique premium quality coffee that keeps your motor running. By Ooze Motorsports. Don't think we're cheating because you think you're fast. By LPT Palette. If you've got a palette not up to tip top shape, call B LPT Palette. We got you covered. By Ford Entertainment Group, PC.net. Matching your want with your wallet, they always bring out the best PC at the right price. By Matt Mills Racing Team, one of the best XFIN teams out there is sponsoring and supporting Pedal Mill Racing League this season. If you want to help support Matt's journey, then follow him up on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And be sure to check out his merchandise line on Facebook. By Man's Maintenance. You want it done right? You call a man. By Barrytown Cleaners. When you got yourself a mess, Barrytown Cleaners can fix that up. And by Lightning Wraps. Most affordable designs made at your leisure. Lightning Wraps will always bring out the best designs in your library. With the Butt Kicker Gamer 2, what you see and what you hear is what you feel. Butt Kicker, the future is feeling. For a new PC or an upgrade to your current one? Look no further than Ford Entertainment Group, your home for the best quality and value in new, pre built, and custom PCs at the lowest price guaranteed. We have affordable PC solutions for any budget with custom builds starting at $595. Even the pros turn to Ford Entertainment Group to get them up and running. With valued customers from all over the world, it's easy to see why Ford Entertainment Group is the most trusted brand in custom PCs. I wanted to save my awesome subscribers the most money when they started their sim racing journey. Well, I searched high and low for the best deals. And I'm so proud that Jeffrey and I have partnered up so I can spread the good news about where to get the lowest price on a high-quality computer. Feel confident when buying from us with the FEG Satisfaction Guarantee. Get yourself on track today by visiting us online at FEGPC.net. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, here to PT Race TV, live here at Sparta, Kentucky. And tonight's action here is presented in part by the Kent folks here at Kentucky Speedway and GTR Racing Simulator as we present the Cup Series now out on the track for Pedal Mill Racing League. Drivers now riding to file and back up, double file for the next go around on the restart. They'll be at lap 40 of 100 on the restart here. And remember, on lap 30 is when most drivers were heading into pit road. So you know that at least they're going to have to pit at least once or twice more depending on the what happens here with the cautions if they are to have any it's going to be a bit of a test of skill test of patience test of strength in my eyes because this really brings out the best and the worst of drivers if they're not careful it's going to be a lot of turmoil a lot of focus and really credibility here for all of them to encounter and make sure to keep ahead of
We'll see what happens here when they get them fired back onto the restart zone here. Fields setting back up into position. Lights will turn off on the pace car this time. I will turn off that Mustang and put on the green and put on the green next go around. It's going to be interesting to see really in my in my eyes what becomes of the field here and what becomes of our drivers when they get back on the position zone because Brandon Pike and Robert Dudley are the ultimate guys right now to knock down Jeffrey Oaks going back into pit road so did Con for a minute Henry Reed Warrens and even Chantel also kind of going in no one suffering any damage or no issues on the start of this race and some great three wide action out of the, out of the battles so who knows we don't know what to expect here in the second half the only thing we can say is just expect the unexpected and keep on watching because really we don't even know what these guys and gals are going to do Seven hundred and fifty horsepower in these two ton beasts. Now ready to reel them off. Everyone fighting back into position, driving and right around the corners and getting prepared to do what needs to be done. Off a corner ledge number four. Reel them back in and hit them down for the corner here. Onto the front straightaway. All field now ready to transfer in and drive hard off the corners. Looking for the ever elusive green flag restart. Here they go off the start. The roar of the motors is just something that just gotta get your adrenaline going. Those blood pumping a little bit, you know it's go time. Work the wheel in and just send her on through. Down the back straight away we go here, out of the gate. Brandon Pike putting a fight to Dudley immediately. Pike trying to get him on the inside. Can't quite hang on though. Maybe trying to save up a little bit more than the everyone else. The Rattle Snake, Robert Kahn will charge ahead. Tire saving is going to be one thing here, but is there going to be enough tire saving throughout this field to really kind of take aim and take shape? Stability and control is going to be one major crucial factor to watch out, and that is certainly what everyone's looking at right now. The Rattlesnake, Robert Kahn, though, is now right up there with Robert Dudley as, the, as both men will go out of here. And now look out here, three wide suit intervening. Oh, my goodness. Reed just literally losing it a little bit off a of corner four there. Tire spins slightly to the left and right as he swings it back right back to the field, almost catching a piece of oak. So you saw on the corner of your screen there, literally that rear end about took a bumper of Reed there. But thankfully, everyone comes out clean and safe. Pike still in this advantage as well. And now here comes the battle that Dudley did not want to see here. This will slow down both drivers here with having to battle side by side. Nearing the halfway point and the rattlesnake. Robert Kahn now looking to put Dudleyville in his place. A snake bite usually, event, usually releases the venom, but the toxins of Kahn just seems to be such a toxic waste on Dudley. Dudleyville is not going to be able to hold tight. He'll lose the lead. New leader, the Loretto Snake, Robert on. Reed now sneaking his way in. Nearly catches a piece of that 22. Does not, though. Everyone comes out okay in Sunscape. Jeffrey Oaks moving the chains back into third. Chantel throttle bottle and Dennis Warren's kind of hanging off the rear end. Jason Henry also kind of doing what's the same. Todd Tufts not too far back this time, but still a pretty good distance and a half here, I would say. Brandon Pike marching his way on the outside. Hoffer trying to get everything he can there. Coming off of turn four. Does not quite have the momentum gaining his ground. The fierceness and the ferocity that that 84 driver Hoffer has to his name certainly is something that I feel deserves a lot more respect than is given here. And he is doing everything he can to make his way around the 22 of Pike. Pike trying to hang on though. Doesn't want to give him any openings. The power moth down out of corner number three into four. Every driver for themselves here. No one giving an inch. No one trying to give anything out. The only thing they can focus on is themselves as drivers as well as their crew. Well, 
Pike now moving up through the chains, but Hofford is moving even further than he realizes. Looks like he might get him on the left, on the inside here this corner time out of turn number three and four. And the lap times do not lie. Look at that gap change there between Pike and Hofford now. Pike and Reed. Hofford, a huge get around that number 27 and the 22. But unfortunately for him, it could go either way here because Reed has got a lot of ground too here made up. Drafting going to be a very crucial factor here for both drivers. Everyone trying to hang on. Dudley slide chaps the wall that about turn two there. That's one part you don't want to hit too often. Turn two can be a little bit of a crucial mistake area. I've seen drivers come a little too hard out that corner and actually toe tap that wall with their rear end or their front. I've done it myself here in many other races, and I tell you one thing, that, that wall, that's a concrete barrier. It does not feel good, even with the safety barriers included. God, just let it all hang out right now. Same thing you saw Jeffrey Oaks do earlier. And Oaks, he knows that fresh, clean air, as we've learned, is pretty much the hugest benefactor to survival and key strength in the races. He knows this. Oaks, he's trying to get ahead back up to him. Fights it out hard here with Dudleyville. Dudley trying to hang on there on the outside. Can't quite pull him off. Oh, almost close together. Contact nearly made. Shades of Kurt Busch and Kyle Busch back on the, fi on the finish back in 2018. Excuse me, 20, uh, 2019, excuse me. They were literally side drafting, bumping and banging all the way to the line. We're getting a piece of that here again. These two just still on each other's game, on each other's throats here. They don't want anybody to give an inch. They don't want anyone to get a chance. They just want to make sure they can duel it out. This is what we call an old-fashioned slobber knocker. Two, emo two drivers, mano e mano, fight them out. Just let them go out there and put some fenders to each other and let them race. And if you like, they'll even add a triple threat in there. Yeah, a little contact. More contact made. Oh, oh boy. Controlled is the game of the game. And that certainly was a very close, cut, close issue there. There is a little damage on both drivers. They swapped paint just touching right there. And we know with that aerodynamics, the car, if they take any damage, they can actually really slow down and pretty much lose all that speed and ground. That's the problem with these Gen 6s, is they just don't have the speed and momentum from the horsepower of the engine to keep up with that groove. They have to rely more on the speed of the air current and the air control, which can be a bit of a hassle. But for the good news is, for, Dove, for Hofford and Reed, they now have an opportunity to try to put Dudley and, and DeRoxy in their place. They have caught up to the second and third guys right now. Khan just simply easing through and walking away. This is the gap between these four right now. You can see there is not a lot of room to make mistakes and not a lot of room to really be given any openings here. It's either dit and go or run for your hills and say, and say whatever you can get. Oops, he diving down in. Dudley trying to fight off. Oh, look out for Hoffert though and Reed. Oh boy. Got home off out of turn two. Still side by side there for a brief minute. Great battling by the veterans and the drivers that know how to get it done here. The only lady in our sport right now, Chantel Throttle Bottle, still hanging in there with the crew and the teams. The 90 of Dennis Warrens not giving an inch here whatsoever. There is damage though on the front end of that 90. I'm not sure if he brushed up with somebody or if he got a little bumpy on the rear in the front of something. I didn't see any damage on any of the cars out here. I could be wrong. Brandon Pike, man, I don't know what is going on, but that car is having all sorts of fits and troubles, keeping the steering and the momentum alive. Rubber may be laying down a little too quick for him, and he knows it. But the only way to really kind of work around that is to slow up and let the car take pace, take aim. And I'll tell you right now, as a driver, it's easier said than done to tell yourself you got to slow down. The Ralph Snake with an impressive lead here out of the gate, still holding on to the field. Dennis Warren's holding up the top six right now. He's kind of the gatekeeper 
Looking to get up to the number five here, which is the 84 of Hofford. While meanwhile, the five trying to gain something on him by using the long-term strategy. She's literally saving those tires up and just kind of watching it out there. I've been studying her laps and how far she's been falling back. She's falling back quite a bit here, but I think I know her a little too well with this. I know a lot of drivers will do this too. They'll generally will, they'll have to work off as what I mentioned earlier, which is the long-term run. Remember these cup cars, they don't necessarily like, they don't necessarily have the overall horsepower to do a full stint speed run like you could do with the 1987 cars. This is more of a kind of stay back, let loose for a minute. Let drivers kind of race themselves out, burn them out, and then just kind of just kind of knock them down one at a time by simply just staying out on the track with a little more speed, a little bit more momentum. As long as you don't lay down too much rubber and you burn up too much on the on the concrete and the asphalt surface, depending on where you're running, you have a lot more grip and a lot more speed and tendency to grab from. And Warren sees every bit of that too. He's been waiting for this one now. Hoffer kept it right up there with Dudley and Reed, but Dudley. Not able to hold back Reed. Corey Reed strong showing there off a of corner number four. And now the 27 moves into third. And Hoffer not too far behind here, folks. Oh, boy. But look at the last of where the counter is at right now. They're running very, very carefully to danger zone. This is tack. This is a very dangerous area here. Last week at Kansas, 80 laps to the distance, and it got a little bit crazy, a little bit hot-headed with some drivers. Everyone was really pushing their agenda, pushing their momentum out on the track. Tonight at Kentucky, it's almost like a complete roll reversal, 100 laps to the distance, and everybody is doing their own strategy, doing their own thing, meanwhile still racing it out in a pretty darn good race. As a matter of fact, I'd have to probably rank this one up as one of the top three races of the season. Without a doubt, without question, this has been an impressive display of control and stability from these drivers. Dudley parking it up top there. He's not invincible. Let's just say that. And this track might be kind of his Achilles heel. Khan and Oxy seem to have this one figured out. Same with Reed here, actually. Although we've been very, very wrong before, so who knows here. On board with the D-Dub Button Box 90s Conboard camera here. And Warren saw a little bit of a gap between him and Hoffer. Now looking to try to exploit that gap. Trying to cave him up on the outside here. Got a good run there coming off a of turn four yet again. And out it's Warren's now putting the D-Dub's 90. Chevrolet Camaro right into the mixture and into the fight. Now looking to take down another Camry. Dudleyville is next on the target list. I still gotta give me one of those button boxes whenever I can. I know D Dub makes some incredible stuff. I gotta try to get a hold of them one day. As soon as I can figure out me a new rig and give me some new equipment and some new tools to use for broadcast and all that, oh, I'm definitely buying me a button box for ASAP. No doubt about that. Dudley on the inside, the 49 representing the Camry, the Chevrolet Camaro of Dennis Warren's represented by that D Dub button boxes. Purple was purple, kind of a little with a magenta, kind of more purplish scheme. I don't know. You guys, you can make you can make fun of me in the comment section all you want. I I'm not the best when it comes to colors. I'm sorry, but I just ain't. And Jason Henry, Chantel Pottle look like both riders kind of trying to do the same kind of strategy, same kind of idea. Tough for Todd Tufts kind of stay in the back here. I think he's just kind of want to lay loose and kind of hang away from everybody. Brandon Pike, not really sure what went wrong there for the 22. Had about a 15 second pit stop there and then finally got out of pit road. That's a bit of a long gap in between here. Comparatively what everyone else did. We do know the five and three had a much longer stint in pit road because they're going to try to do a very long-term run and let the guys and gals let the guys battle it up up top and burn their stuff up for the rattlesnake robert khan his strategy is it's just point blank just out race the field how do you out race the field just literally put that thing on the track put four tires on it put a full thing of gas hit your marks and forget the rest 
It's one that we know uh, one of our little friends who is hanging around the comment section, the man beast, William Man Jr., has been well known to do. Usually it works on these long-term runs there, but unfortunately for his end, he hasn't had a long-term run, at least that goes his way all too often this season. So hopefully tomorrow night, though, we will see that come for the uh, the man beast. So good luck down there in the GMG Truck Series there, bud. That will be covered here live on Facebook, and then we'll have it up on YouTube following afterwards. So, again, guys, it's, now's the time. Now's the place. Next year, we got more things planned, and we got even bigger things kind of coming up. Corey Reed opts into pit road, so it looks like he's going to try to stent out for a 35-lap gap. I don't know if that'll be enough time with the pit strategy, the fuel, and the tires, if that is actually going to be enough give or take. This is a very interesting situation here. Been kind of let loose and let go, and everyone's been just kind of patiently waiting for results. Everyone just finding openings where they can, making moves where they got to, and hoping for the best. Jeffrey Todd Tuss, he's, yeah, he's kind of hanging around back there. He already went into pit road. Jeffrey Oaks and Robert Kahn, really the two main combatants that tonight really have shown their speeds and their worth. And now, surprise there, those two have had great robberies over the course of the years and the battle and the prices they ran at. I've had the honor and privilege of facing off against them multiple times. And yeah, off the top of my head, I think only one time was I ever able to actually beat the Rattlesnake at his own game. And yeah, I was back at the, the track called Phoenix Raceway, or back in the day it was called ISM Raceway when we were on NASCAR Heat 4. I still don't know how I do it, and I know I keep bringing it up, but seriously, that, that truck race meant a lot to me, a lot to my fans, my friends, and family there. What a win that was. Man, just knocked down the throttle, Chantel Pottle, and quite a few other guys like Hofford, Oaksey, and them. And yeah, It was just a great time. That was, that was back when racing wasn't like what it is now which is so more realism so more realistic it was just you put the cars on the track you race them and somehow i guess maybe i thought a little more ahead and i somehow kept my all my four of my tires in just long enough to win a race so i'll take it well robert other again going to try to stretch out the full length of his car in the run i don't know if he's going to have enough time here he's going to have to go into pit road and hipped in there now and the five Chantel Bottle and Jason Henry are going to do much the same. So it looks like they've learned from last week. Henry, back her down, bud. You got to get that car stopped. Does have a pit stop time there. He has to be careful about it. Gets in just in good nick of time there. The Rattlesnake Robert Conn is going to try to race back out, get some speed going. Him and Pike will have a little tussle here for that first spike spot here. They are going to beat out Dudley and Chantel one way or another here. Pike trying to get some momentum back up top side. Not a lot of room up there, though. That grit, there's really not a lot of speed you can get off trying to dime it off that corner. I've learned that too well. You got to kind of try to get it right in the middle and then bring it down to the bottom lane. That's where you get the track shortened out the most if you're trying to do that. And it looks like Chantel may have had a little bit of a uh, fish issue on the pit stop here. I think she might have a penalty there. She's suffering through because Dudley, Henry are out as well. That might have been the costly error she did not want to see. She is out of pit road now. It looks about as speaking of coming out of pit road, Corey Reed and Bike went out of pit road not too long ago, and they are having themselves a whale of a battle here. Reed, the Reed may be the preferred favorite here, considering how many laps he's got less burnt up from that car here. You can see Pike, he got a lot more tore up and a lot more used. Khan didn't have his nearly as much. And that seems to be kicking in his favor here. Feel stretched out a little bit here. We are still about 29 laps remaining in this race. Corey Ray doing everything he can. By the way, we're going commercial free for this one, folks. We're not cutting to any commercials here. We just got to make that clear right now before somebody goes asking me in the comments section. Don't worry. This is commercial free. We're not doing any more commercials now. 28 laps to go. Anybody's guess here.
Khan right now managing to hammer down, hang in tough, hang up up. Kind of hang this whole track dry and just kind of let her sink and swim. That's pretty much been his game plan all day long. He hasn't had no troubles with that at all. Well, that pit, well that uh, penalty that Chantel suffered there in the, pits in the pit row is definitely going to hurt her chances to really get anything going. She ta I talked to her earlier today about it too, and she said, yeah, my seasons have not been good since I came on iRacing. I've only been able to have really good success with the Super Late Models division. And she's, she kind of pointed out to me something that kind of reminded me of kind of something I do too, which is we're more short track racing based than we have been these big tracks. The big tracks to me have always been kind of my Achilles heel. Because I always prefer those mile long tracks and under. Honestly, if you throw me on a dirt track, that's good enough for me right there. But if you throw it on tracks like, like say, Thompson or Iowa Speedway or, you know, Richmond Raceway. And it's like, there's now an even flank field. A little bit more of a shake-up track. Heck, if you throw even, even all the other short tracks in there. Let's go Hickory. Let's go with, you know, Langley Speedway. Let's... Throw in a little bit of a weird, throw in a bit of an oddball here. Let's throw in New Smyrna. You know, there's so many other, there's so many short tracks out there comparatively, and as much as much as there is with the big tracks that I think honestly kind of get on the sim. It's kind of made me give more respect to these big tracks, but the short tracks really are kind of my name of the game. That's kind of where my feel, my comfort zone is. And she told me that's kind of been her strategy too. She's been running more short tracks than she does these big tracks, so. Yeah, it's one thing we're learning with iRacing, too, is that you cannot just simply hop into a car or hop into a track and think you're going to pretty much outrun them or outgun anybody. Heck no, it does not work with that way with these things. This is stuff you have to actually take your time into. you got to put laps on the track. you got to study the car. you got to study how it handles. And then you got to study how the track changes over time, how the weather kind of affects it. It just makes for an incredible series, and it makes for such an impressive display of all-out runs and all-out momentum so yeah it say what you will about the plate tracks and say what you will about the mile and a half or the cookie cutters or any of them but i will say i do have a much more fun respect as a broadcaster as well as a driver for these big tracks because of how tough they really truly are and i just never could see that because i was always so used to that arcade style racing when you were on nascar heat or say if you're on the other stuff By the way, if I forgot to say, Arley Dudley was with us as well here earlier on. Don't know if you're still hanging with us, Arley, but thank you for tuning on in as always there. 21 laps left to go. Field positions now starting to cut down. Oaksy strategy going to be a little bit more effective than Reed's here, it looks like. Reed losing a lot of ground and clearance here. Knows he's going to have to try to hold back, to hold the charge up because Oaksy is coming for him. Off a corner, two, three, and four. This time by Oaksy is now going to take over a second place. Yet again, 20 laps remain. Impressive stuff here so far from that 20 of Oaksy as well as from the 27 of Corey Reed. Every driver been pretty much kind of eating and banging and fighting it out. We saw a lot of three wide salutes earlier come clean, and we saw a lot of bumps and bangs. There from Dudley and Reed. Those two had a war on their hands, but they were still able to keep things relatively smooth and on pace. Oxy and Khan, though, without a doubt, have been the fastest of the drivers, but the only thing is they have not truly been together on their own other than the few times that they raced each other from the back of the out of the front. Khan had to work his way from the outhouse, get to the front. Oxy had to literally get a good start and got a great jump out of the gate to the lead. But then Khan gets a better pit strategy, pit stop, ends up taking it away there from Oxy. And the next thing you know, it's pretty much just kind of a point click on a what, where the heck do I go kind of game now. Yeah, 
down for our camera here, just giving you guys, you guys a good idea of like what some of the other drivers are hanging death with, kind of keeping their corners up with right now at the moment. Those nagging injuries definitely got to be bothering that five a little bit more than usual, knowing that she's had to drive this so long out here, having to kind of keep her pace, keep her distance in check here. Khan looks like he might be slowing up slightly here. Oh, you can, oh, yeah, right there, actually, you can hear, well, listen to that, he is clutching in in the car right now, trying to keep the fuel running check, keep the motor at bay. What he's trying to do is he's trying to stop the engine, so he cuts it out by clutching in, and what that does is, is it restricts the fuel lines from, from charging up to the engine block and building into the power generator there of the car. Think of it like this. When you turn it, that engine off, it's like turning off the power to save gas with the electricity bill. It's pretty much what he's trying to do to cut more laps in the car and more laps on the track. He's not worried about tires anymore. He's worried about trying to get the fuel to just last out long enough. This is not looking good here for Khan. He was, he was doing a great job earlier being smart about his run. Now, Oxy is making a very good pace here and making a very clear-cut idea of what he wants to do. Here was the link in between between drivers here. Well, this is the link between drivers right now. This is what looks between each other. Now Khan has got about two more laps than Oxy does on fuel. Now that may not seem like a lot, but keep in mind, look to the left side there and look how much the stint it was before they all went into pit road. That's not exactly going to work towards Khan's advantage here. He's actually in a very big spot here because if Oxy catches him or he actually could somehow save more fuel, I'd hate to, I would hate to be Khan right now. He's looking at that fuel lemon. And he's, he's listening to his crew chief right now. He knows what's going on. He knows this is not good if he does not get enough fuel. This is where that journey kind of comes forth and really puts into perspective of what, what it feels like. Khan is just keeping a very, very close eye on that fuel you can hear him clutching in he's losing a lot of speed because of it but again he doesn't care he's just trying to keep a few more laps if you do that over time about two or so laps you might be able to save it just enough 12 laps remaining the only other way to really keep your fuel from burning up so quick is to literally draft off somebody and actually keep the car in rhythm keep the car in motion to where it doesn't have to gas in gas off it kind of burned up more fuel. It actually can actually it can pretty much stay in a more positive and controlled state. Jason Henry definitely playing close attention to that as well, as he is now moving chains in. Dennis Warren's already having to pit in there. The five Chantel Pottle, you know, honestly, I was kind of figuring out she was had a penalty earlier. I think she did have a penalty, but I think also one thing that may have helped her with that penalty is if she went in and got fuel, if all the other drivers go into pit road and they had to fuel up, that actually might be enough to actually win this race out. We don't know. I mean, that's just a shot in the dark. I don't know what the heck she had to deal with or what she's got going on down there. There's 10 laps remaining here, and Jeffrey Oaks is guns blazing on Khan right now. Khan knows he is in trouble. Oaks, he is literally within two laps, about a second and a fifth, about a second and a seventh about part of each other right now. You can hear them clutching in, clutching out, trying to get the car to just save more fuel. But look at the gap gain between Khan and Oxy. That is a lot of ground covered in just a short amount of laps. And Khan knows that too well. That time slowed up just a little bit. It looks like Khan maybe trying to push it slightly here to keep Oxy in check. Listen carefully. 
You hear that right there? That is him clutching that car in. He is trying to get the car to take as much fuel intake as less as po as least as possible. He is hoping that he can get the car to at least somewhat stay under control and still build some speed up. But again, there's just so much on the line, so much at stake for him and his crew. He knows that if he does not try to simply set that fuel line up, it may cost him. Well, this is going to be close here. We're going to get about the final two laps, and that's when these drivers are going to have to decide what happens. This has been, if you don't count that caution in between there, this has been a full stint green flag race. No wrecks, no nothing. It's been clean as a whistle, and that, honestly, for what this season has had, is pretty darn impressive. Not to mention the great battles we've seen here on p TV and the great wars raged. This is just another chopping block right here. You can see the dab between Dudley and Henry right now. If Jeffrey Oaks, he's currently got literally about a 12 second gap on all of them. Really just making this, making this look way too easy. Same with Khan, but the problem is for Khan is that he's sold down so much he doesn't realize what's happening here. And now here comes that 20. This is the what he's been wanting to see. Will Khan push it just a little bit to try to keep Oxy from winning it from him? If they fight it out here, this could cost both of them five laps to go. Now it's time for crunch time here. Which one of these drivers blinks first? Khan's going to keep clutching in and out. He's not even, I don't think he's going to try to worry about Oaks. He does. I think if Oaks, he gets the move, he'll try to pass him. If I was Khan right now, I wouldn't try to block. I would try to stay in motion here. Both drivers are clutching in as hard as they can to try to save up as much, but they're also trying now to build up as much speed as they can. That is impressive. And it's just crazy to think what they have done, where they've come from, how far this series has gotten. It's led to this moment. Somebody is going to have to fade in. Somebody's going to have to give up. But which one's it going to be? Khan thought he ran away with this one, but he forgot one thing. There is a fuel limit, a fuel set you have to work off of, and you got to make sure you time in just right. Oxy was very well aware of that, too. And made it work all day long. Now this time, the aerodynamics don't matter. It doesn't matter how much speed you can get with the tires. All that matters is did you have enough left? Watch out though because Dudleyville and Henry are not too far behind here. They are they are kind of catching up ever so slightly here. It might be a slight opening for them to catch them. You see Matthew Hoffer, Corey Reed, they are laps down. They are going to have to try to find a way around both drivers so that they make the mistake and give up. But they only have time because now we have got only two laps remaining. The next time by is a white flag. Will they run out of fuel? Or do they have enough? I think they've got just enough to for fumes. Oh, look out. Here comes Jeffrey Oaks. The 20 moving on the outside. Now looking to go inside. He's got Corey Reed right behind him, though. That's going to be a bit of trouble here. He had his opening trying to hit it up on Khan. Couldn't quite get it. He's going to get pushed up the outside. Khan's going to get a big break here. A little contact made there between Reed and Oxy. They get through it. White flag is out for the Rattlesnake. Robert Khan. They're going to have to drive it in as hard as they can. Give it everything they've got. Is there enough time? Is there enough left in the tank? Can Khan do it? Can he get it through? Oaks, he's going to try to catch him on the back straight away. Give him one more big run. Deja vu. Here we go into turn three and four. Which one's it going to be? Khan Hayes. He's out of fuel. He's out of fuel. Oaks to the inside. And, and Jeffrey Oaks will beat him out to a fuel line to the finish. Oh, my. Robert Khan runs out of fuel on the last lap. Has to put, and tries to get it down to pit road quickly to get to the finish. But Dudleyville, oh my, just loses out by four seconds. But Khan somehow will be able to hang on. Oh my, oh my. 
Wow, my friends, that right there is what you call the finish and a journey, to say the least, nail-biting action at its best. Top five, Oxy Khan, Dudley, Henry, and Warren coming to the finish. Hoffer getting a solid top five and, or excuse me, sixth spot. Chetel finished seventh, eighth to Brandon Pike, 27th goes of ninth. We'll go Corey Ray in ninth, Brandon Pike in eighth, excuse me, Jeffrey Todd Tuss with tenth. Race results now popping up on your screen, presented in part by D-Dub Button Boxes. Unbelievable. Fuel run strategy wins this one out, and Jeffrey Oaks just barely ekes it. Looks like Khan actually gets a penalty point, so he's actually going to be put into pit road. He is a lap short, and he's going to be put a lap down. Robert Dudley will be considered second. Third will then be Jason Henry. And Oaks, he didn't even have any fuel to do a burnout. Oh, my goodness. Wow. That right there, friends, is what you call a finish to the end. We will be right back after this quick commercial message. Introducing RS30 Ultra. The first sim racing wheel and pedals designed by a professional championship racer. Officially licensed by Microsoft, RS30 brings next level realism to your racing sims. Since the road know your vehicle and get faster lap times as you tear through the track. Dual helical gear motors give you more torque than traditional gear drive motors with the same smoothness and quietness of a belt drive motor. Experience a stunning six newton meters of torque, the most torque per dollar than any other wheel, and fast accurate feedback with zero dead zones. Feel every nuance and know exactly when you're understeering, oversteering, or losing traction. Spring-loaded pedals give you responsive throttle modulation and brake progression for absolute control and precision, just like the real thing. Two additional pedals can be used as clutch and e-brake, or as pedal-free throttle and brakes. A rotation switch lets you easily toggle between simulation racing and arcade-style racing. Even the diameter of the wheel is calibrated to exact race car specifications. And an easy share button lets you save and share your best laps with a simple push. From the metal build to the suede wheel and steel pedals, every detail is dialed to give the entire system a high-end feel. Get better, go faster, win more, and enjoy every second of it. With RS30 Ultra, you'll race like a pro and feel like one too. RS30 Ultra by GTR Simulator. Go fast. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back here live on Pizza Race TV. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is time to talk with our race winners, our top three. Join me here in Jeffrey Oaks. We just talked about it a second ago here, man. Coming out of that car, you were pretty much sweating bullets, and uh, there was no Netflix chills in between. You literally had to just hold on for everything you got, and the fuel run just lasted a little longer than Con. Yeah, I mean, that was a that was a great race. I saw it shaping up in the first uh, stage there where Archon and I were pretty equal, so to speak, on the long run. Um, he kind of got to jump with a little different pitch strategy. He took tires that first time in the stage, and I didn't, and that kind of switched things up. But um, all in all, it was a good, good long run race. For sure, there it was a, yeah, well, it was a good long race. But I mean, I, I gotta ask you, man. I mean, we haven't seen a very good long, we haven't seen a very long race like this in quite some time. I mean, how hard was it to adjust to kind of get used to that, uh, that old frame of mindset and having to work off of such a clean cut corner racing that you had to deal with tonight in Kentucky? I'm happy to see it. Um, I prefer races like this 10 times out of 10, like every time. I'd rather do the long run where it comes down to tires and fuel strategy than cautions. And So, um, you know, I do enough racing that I was able to stay sharp on it enough tonight and put the long run together. Um, and I was clutching the crap out of it there to be able to outlast Con. so... Yeah, you certainly All did. down to fuel game. <laughs> it certainly did, man. So, uh, I guess at the end of the day, man, I'm just going to ask this real quick, but you are going to walk away with the W and pretty much the long stint of the run. Who do you want to thank you for this? I want to thank everybody that came out tonight to, just, to put on a long run race like that. Uh, in leagues, you don't see that a whole, whole lot, so that is nice. Um, so, the tops to all the drivers that come out tonight. 
Uh, hats off to Archon for running another strong race. Um, I want to thank all our sponsors. You up there in the booth, appreciate what you do. Um, Jack Dow, Chevy, it's pretty strong again. I don't know if we can get first place in this championship. Dudley's going to have to have a really bad race, but uh, we're not going to give up fighting. I want to thank my beautiful wife and Warren for practicing with me. For sure there. Well, nevertheless, Oaksy, congratulations, man, on a strong, hard finish here and a great battle straight to the end. All right, thanks, buddy. See you next week. See you next week. Ladies and gentlemen, Jeffrey Oaks in the number 20, your race winner here tonight. Now, I believe we have a little bit of a confusion here. I'm getting, I was shown here that it was top five right now. You can see his con, but we have in our race results here. That con was a lap down. I'm not sure where the race results are because I think Dudley and Henry are in here. So I'm not sure where this one's going towards. Let me give me one minute here, guys. I'm going to take a look at the results here. Okay, so they're still considering Dudley and Henry in the iRacing end. They're going to give them the top three. So I'm going to go ahead with what iRacing says here and go with my lifetime feed as well. So we're going to second still will be Robert Dudley. And Jason Henry will finish second in this race so a little bit of confusion out there but that is how it's going to play out on our end so we're going to go with it robert dudley you're going to come away second place here tonight man so congratulations for that and what a bit of a wild wild for nick race this was you had a pretty good car out of the gate but then got shuffled back into the back man how'd you get out of that mess though so quick in the first half hey chris how you doing uh i don't remember long race man <laughs> uh the, mostly uh got back there and just Thought about the situation, this points racing, really. Just trying to save points. And... Yeah, man, that kind of working out that way for you and kind of make sure you can keep the car under control and all that, didn't it? Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not getting a good interview tonight. I'm not feeling too good. But, yeah, it, it was – I want to congratulate Jeff and Robert running a good race and uh, – Doing that fuel mileage thing like I was that last run. I was shutting the car off every corner for like 15 to 20 laps in that last run. And got myself back on the podium. Like I said, I, I'm concentrating on the points now. But we've got Michigan next week going for the win like I did the last season. I like that track, so I'm going to go for the win in Michigan and uh, top this season off. Anybody want to thank you for this finish here tonight? Yeah, thank you for putting on a good broadcast like you always do. Uh PTM Racing League, all the admins, Chantel, Robert, Matthew, you. Uh, I think the ALS Association let me fly their colors on my car. I think my dad, Arliss, for supporting me, my wife, my son, and uh, every all the people out there that tune in every week. For I'll sure. see you next week. We will see you next week indeed, and don't feel bad for not feeling well. Between us, I'm actually under the weather too. I don't know how bad my throat sounds, but... It's a little ra I'm feeling pretty raspy tonight, I will not lie. So, But congratulations, man, on a second-place finish. Thank you, buddy. Ladies and gentlemen, your second-place finisher here tonight, Robert Dudley. And now let's go ahead and take cop this one off. Jason Henry, your third-place finisher here tonight in that three. Jason, great to have you back on board, man. What a podium finish for you and your crew, man. What a, what a wild race this one is. Jason, you got a copy, bud? And I think he might not have a copy here, guys. No, it looks like he does not. So, hold on a minute. Henry, you got a copy, bud? I got a copy. Do you have a copy? There he is. All right. Well, we got you now. So, Henry, congratulations on our third place finish here tonight, man. What a long race and a fight it was from start to finish. Talk to me about this one, man. Yeah, a lot going on. A lot really at stake here in Kentucky, didn't you? I did. And I'm just thankful to be back on the podium. It's been a been a long time since that win at Richmond. We were I kind of lost speed the last few weekends, including today, which is why I took the the fuel strategy to try to salvage something going into the finale next weekend. For sure, there and obviously uh, Michigan coming in, you're going to be one of the guys that are trying to get to that top five area. Maybe look for a good showing for next season. I mean, how tough was it though this season to kind of just here with these Cup cars and really getting with this crew? Because it seemed like you're really having to push everything you could and then some just to work around these guys. It's been a big change coming into the season. My first season with pedal the metal, it's a great group of racers that race hard. So you're really required to put in the extra effort throughout the week to be competitive. And it's just finally starting to pay off a little bit. And 
hopefully build some more momentum for the, the new season coming up. Absolutely, indeed. Well, nevertheless, though, as the new season draws near, who do you want to thank you for this one here tonight? I want to thank you, first and foremost, for putting on such a great broadcast. All of our sponsors, Butt Kicker, Lightning Wraps, uh, all of them. I just kind of blanking at the moment, my bad, but I just can't thank our sponsors enough for letting us do this. I can't thank my wife enough for letting me be a part of this. For sure there. Well, nevertheless, Jason, appreciate coming on board, man. Congratulations on a third-place finish, and we certainly hope to see more of you in the future, sir. All righty. Thank you very much. Have a good night. You too. Ladies and gentlemen, Jason Henry, the number three driver, coming away here with a third-place finish here tonight. Race fans, that's all but going to do it here for our showcase. A big thank you again to our friends at GTR Racing Simulator, D-Dub Button Boxes, The Butt Kicker Company, Gearhead Coffee, Ooze Motorsports, LPT Pallet, FEGPC.net, Matt Mills Racing Team, Mans Maintenance, Berrytown Cleaners, and Lightning Wraps for all your support and all you've done for us. Big thank you to the fans at home. Thank you so much for coming on board. We love you guys. Thank you so much from all of us here at P3 TV. And until the green flag is flying next time here, one more race to go, but a next, but tomorrow night, one more race for pushing limits and one big one for Green Mountain Grills in this week. Is only just beginning. Stay tuned. Keep it real. PT Race TV has always got you covered.